Hello guys, today I would like to introduce you a little bit odd weapon and that's Hungarian AMD 65 assault rifle. We will talk only very briefly about its history. Well, Hungarians at some point around uh, 1962 realized that they want something that's a little bit different from the conventional AKM that they had in that time. They had a locally produced uh, AKM clone. So they started to developing something a little bit more compact for officers and for uh, tank troops, you know, uh, tankers, anybody who needed something a little bit more compact. I would even say something like PDW, let's say, the role that AKS-74U filled. Well, before that, in Hungarian army, the AMD-65 filled. So they came up with something like this. I only threw together from the parts bin uh, on the frame all the distinct parts uh, for this model. Uh, the factory configuration is just terrible and in this factory setting it's a de-worst version of AKM assault rifle. There is nothing worse from the user's point of view than this. Well, you might argue that some of the commercial grade uh, Chinese AKMs, yes, they are worse, but only because the quality is worse. Here the quality is actually half okay. The barrels are good, for example, but for example the trigger groups are just terrible. So we will go from the front to the back, uh, mentioning the distinct features for the AMD 65. So first is the muzzle brake. It's the loudest and the worst muzzle brake on any AK. Because there is no wall going down the brake, there is only little wall at the very end. So this is just hollow space with the ports to the side. So what that does uh, is massive concussive way to the left, to the right and toward the shooter. And there is actually no flame mitigation, the flame go on each side. So really there is absolutely no reason using this one. What we did a little bit uh, keep the length of the weapon and get a little bit of usability was that we removed the muscle devices and in turning machine we basically drilled out the baffle at the very end. So like this we got a little bit of a flow through design and the concussive effect wasn't that massive. Then we go to the back. You can see that you can't put bayonet because there is no bayonet lag, nothing like it. And the barrel itself, they are chrome-lined, it's 12.5 inches long or short, uh, it's the more accurate explanation. The gas tube don't have any upper hand guard. In theory this should help you with the ventilation, but it mostly helped with the cost. Because when you remove all the wooden parts, well except the wooden handles, then you save really a lot of money. So we have the upper gas tube. Then we have the lower handguard. Be careful when you're replacing handguard of those. The front handguard keeper is actually very atypical. It has like two pins that prevent the handguard from rotating. So then when you take any aftermarket handguard or any other, for example, wooden AKM one, you can't actually fit it. You need to take Dremel tool, drill a huge chunks of the handguard on each side, only then you can fit it. Here toward the end it's mostly okay, it's like more traditional AK design. So, uh, even the pistons, basically this length, it's completely different from any other AK standard. So for example, the Zastava M92, it's a bit shorter, but the traditional AKM, it's actually a bit longer. So this entire distance, it's basically custom. But uh, you can use the bolt carriers. So for example, UK, you take Soviet AKM bolt carriers, you can screw on the AMD pistons, use it that way. This handguard works just fine with the factory 20 round magazines. Uh, this assault rifle was supposed to be used mainly with the 20 rounders. But you can still put the 30 round magazine in. So you take it like so, you can actually fit it. And you can fit even 40 rounders, but definitely you will not be making any fast reloads this way. So the 20 rounders only help with the compactness. Uh, also traditionally when we used our uh, subsonic AKs in reconnaissance we were taking those 20 rounders for the subsonic bullets. Because you can tell which magazine is loaded with subsonic and it's also shorter. So when you were waiting in prone in observation, anything like it, 
it was just a little bit more comfortable. Uh, as I mentioned, the trigger groups, they have a lot of uh, marks from the manufacturing. We had some problems with resets of the triggers. Back then it was easier for us to just use entire trigger groups from uh, Soviet AKMs and Soviet AK-74s and replace those trigger groups completely. But the biggest complaint, by far the biggest complaint is the stock. It's only one piece of wire like this. The folding mechanism is actually quite good. You press here on the bottom, can fold it. The key is to put out the pin, that basically keeping the stock, mushroom it on the top and put it in vice and bend it and then hammer it back in. Like this you remove the wobble and you basically make it secure and you prevent the pin falling down and you losing it in the field. The stock itself will for sure start wobble because it's not actually welded in so first line of defense is to put weld on the stock. Then what we do uh, originally was that we were uh, basically welding rods like this on the top. Something like you can see here. First we were making them with hump like this, now we make them just straight, going from here to here to give you at least a little bit of the cheek weld. Also, what is very funny with the stock, because when you work with the AMDs, carry them around, your cheek weld it's all the time different. Like the little bit of cheek weld that you can get on this stock, because ah, as you can see, you can bend those very easily. So when you work in field and basically carry it around, each time the stock is bended a little bit differently. So this is one more aspect why it's just good to put some additional material onto the stock and make it a little bit more user friendly that way. So now we will take a look at what I think is logical and in upgrading the AMD 65. For us currently there is really no real sense of doing that anymore, but we also pretty much reached uh, the end of the stock of the AMDs because 762 by 39 was once upon a time very plentiful, so all the guns got destroyed basically shooting them, then you just write them off, harvest the parts that you can use and that uh, will be the end of AMD 65s for us. You might be surprised, but in Ukraine we even have few of the AMP 69s. I've seen do two of those over the years. What that is, it's basically AMD variant that is uh, supposed to shoot rifle grenades and it has some very weird features, but maybe some little bit forward thinking features as well, because for example the optic have like mag magnified and non-magnified parts, stuff like this. But back to the AMD 65. So the one that basically uh, we can use now looks something like this or like derivative of this. So first of all we need to get uh, rid of the huge muzzle flash. So either you use suppressor or we using our domestic Strela flash hiders or some European flash hider like this. Basically anything where the 7.62 bullet can pass through and you get some flash mitigation you put at the end. We go further back. Uh, here we have actually very rare part. This is Ultimac for AMD 65. I don't believe those are manufactured anymore. But when we received this sample, what we do is that we basically shorten domestic clones. You shorten it, recrown it in this part and then you can fit it AMD 65 as well. Like this you get surface for mounting of your laser aiming modules and also if you wish so to put your lights on. Then as I mentioned we can take normal AK-74 handguard that is plentiful or some fab defense handguard dremel out the front portion and fit it on. Like this you get normal usable area. Then we go further back and uh, for me personally I think the very first step to upgrade on any AK if in back in the day it was this front section of the rail. Now with the use of the thermal imaging devices the first section that you need to modify on every AK is the rear. You want to be sure that it can accommodate the thermal imaging device. 
So here we getting to another bad feature on the AMD. Because uh, this portion it's actually a bit longer, few millimeters longer than on normal AKMs. Because here at the end is only little bit of the metal, only little bit of the material. So this length it's basically too long. For example when you're using Fab Defense PDCs they hang it, hanging in the front only by very little piece of material. When you use any other system, like for example Texas weapon system, I, I believe this is the dog leg for the generation. Yes, it can accommodate it, but it you will see noticeable gaps in the front because this distance is just a bit too long. Uh, then I mentioned the use of AK74 trigger groups just because those work and those are a little bit easier to service. By definition, all the AKs are overguessed. That helps with the reliability, but also the comfort for the shooter. It's not that great, especially when you use our military ammo, which all of us use, because that one is a bit more toxic. It have the mercury in the primer, right? So getting all the extra gas in your face, it's actually a little bit of an issue. It's not an issue when you use normal muzzle brakes, but once you start using suppressors, device like that, it actually become an issue. So the first line of defense, instead of adjustable gas blocks and adjustable pistons, it's that we just duct tape the rear of the weapon like so, so it doesn't blow in your face that uh, much. Then we need to change the grips for our plentiful AK-74 grips because those Hungarian ones are just terrible ergonomy. And after that just put the extra part on the stock, weld it on, little bit, uh, dremel out the welds and that's that. And after all those modifications you get basically a weapon that is very good host for any device that you're testing or for recruit when basically he needs to shoot big volumes of the blanks. It's much easier to use 762 by 39 blanks because those are plentiful. Also when you're learning with some new laser aiming modules when using the thermals at night this is just great host for those reasons. So altogether AMD 65, a big number of those were once upon a time donated to Afghan National Police. I believe Americans bought like 40,000, then Hungarian government uh, gave another 45,000 and few years after that uh, the Afghan National Police basically filed a complaint that uh, those are very bad uh, weapons together with the VZ-58 from Czechoslovakia that they just don't fit their needs and they addressed all the same issues. Muzzle brake, forearm, hand guards and the stock combination of those three. So once you remove all those three factors, this is actually okay rifle to use. But thankfully with the international help and the influx of western weapon, we don't need to cut corners like this anymore and we can just use the good stuff. If you wish to support us, you can do so through the PayPal link down below or through subscribing on my Patreon where I'm putting extra videos. Thank you very much guys for watching and see you in the next video.